Welcome to Zone Coverage. We're here at Stewart's TV and Appliance in the Sub-Zero Wolf Kitchen for a weekly look at everything having to do with the Cleveland Browns. I'm Scott Petrak, Browns beat writer for the Chronicle Telegram, Medina Gazette, and BrownZone.com, and this is Jim Ingram, our sports columnist. Well, Jim, the Browns lost 13-16 to to the Minnesota Vikings on Sunday. But to me, it didn't quite feel as bad as some of the other losses. Maybe that's because it was too early in the morning. I hadn't woken mm-hmm. up yet. Maybe it's because they were 3,700 miles away in London. But did it feel like any sign of progress, <clears throat> even though they still lost by double digits? Maybe for five minutes. Yeah. It looked like progress. You know, the thing I think they're into now is in these games, the opponent just figures we just yeah. show up and this will be no problem. And I thought there was a lot of that going on. I mean, the Vikings, the first half, were just kind of going through the motions. And they saw that the Browns were actually, especially the defense, was yeah. playing pretty spirited ball. And then once the second half clicked in, you know, you could see the Vikings, okay, it's time to – play a half here and win this game. So I think they're facing that probably the rest of the way. You know, the, the team they play is going to come in expecting how hard do we have to play to right. beat these guys. And, and the answer frequently is they don't think it's very hard. No, you're right. And it was good, I guess, to see them lead into the third quarters, the latest we've seen them lead all season. Um, but you're right. It, it ended like you'd expect it to end with the double-digit loss and they weren't in it in the fourth quarter. However, Deshaun Kaiser, I thought, and we're going to talk about baby steps again, I thought the rookie quarterback – Made some improvement this week. Obviously, no interceptions, no turnovers, which was the first time he's done that this year. Mm-hmm. Completed the game, which is the first time he hadn't been benched in the last two starts he'd made. Um, we're halfway through the season now. Do you see enough out of Sean, Deshaun Kaiser to think this kid might have enough potential to be the guy, or is it still <clears throat> still too many mistakes, too many missed passes? I, I know you, you. I think you like, I do like Deshaun more than I like Deshaun. I, I think. I'm not there. I'm not there with you on that one. I, he made some nice throws in London. The, the couple long balls were really well placed and well thrown. But I just think, uh, I, I just he doesn't just bowl me over yeah. yet. And maybe it's because of the lack of talent around him. But I, I don't think uh, this should change the fact that when the draft comes around, that they're going to have to take a high draft pick. You know, unless he suddenly goes off in the second half, which doesn't seem likely with the personnel. Right. I, you might be right, and you're, you are right that I do like Deshaun Kaiser more than you do, and probably more than most people do. I'm a, I am like big guys. I like guys with strong arms, and he has those qualities. He hasn't been accurate enough for sure. Um, but I keep going back to the fact that he just doesn't have enough of a supporting cast. You know, you look at the receiving core. On Sunday, I think the receivers caught six passes, and he had to throw the running backs and tight ends, which doesn't help. Um, Trent Green, the analyst on CBS, said the windows are so small. So – I think he's got a lot of stuff working against him. That doesn't mean he hasn't been bad in himself, but I would like to see him get the final eight weeks and see if he can see improvement. Um, speaking of quarterbacks, Jimmy Garoppolo gets traded from New England to San Francisco late Monday night. The Browns have been connected with Garoppolo since last offseason. NFL Network reported that they offered a second-round pick in change um, around the draft, and they were declined by the Patriots. Do you blame the Browns that this is another quarterback that kind of gets away from them, that they can't land a guy when they have all the draft picks in the world to trade? Yeah, I would. I mean, especially a guy that they really aggressively pursued in the offseason, and now this is a guy that gets traded in the middle of the year and, and for only one draft pick, yeah. and the Browns have a team that was loaded with draft picks, I think, what, two or three in the second round. Three, yeah. So, you know, they could have easily paid this price and, and gotten the guy that they had wanted six months earlier. So, yeah, and given the state of their, their quarterback situation and the uncertainty of the coach and the front office and everything going forward, why not? I mean, right. it's something, it's, you know, at least you can bring this guy in and you can even say, well, you know, let's see how he does. You know, we need one more year to evaluate this yeah. guy. So there was a lot of reasons why the front office – could buy some time with a with a, a perceived better quarterback if they'd have made this trade. And you would get a sense of just how good the roster is, right? How good the rest of the roster is if he comes in and plays at a much higher level than Deshaun Kaiser, which mm-hmm. would be expected because he's been in the league for a while. He's had success in the two games that he played. My only question is, did his agent tell the Browns, we're not going to sign a long-term extension with you, and therefore, the Browns said, hey, we're not going to give up a second-round pick for a guy that might only be here eight weeks or we're going to have to franchise tag for $25 million. They might have thought it wasn't worth it. However, it goes back to the old discussion we've had many a times. Mm-hmm. The Browns just don't seem to value the quarterback position enough, and it shows up here again. Speaking of that, let's play a fun game, Jim. I don't know if it'll be fun at all, but <laughs> which, um, which quarterback that got away, Carson Wentz, Deshaun Watson, or Jimmy Garoppolo, do you think the Browns should regret the most and will regret the most? Um, I would say I like Wentz maybe slightly better than Watson, but I think the Watson one really sticks out because not only did they 
pass on him. They actively moved yeah. away from him. I mean, they had the exact pick that they could have used to get him. And to make matters worse, the team they traded that pick to took that yeah. took Watson, and right. Watson's going off now, as you know. Yeah. And I, I think that's the one that they really because it, it was it was it was just sitting right there yeah. for them. If they did nothing and took took him, no one would have ever criticized them for that pick. But they didn't, and they actively moved away from that pick which really raises a lot of questions about their ability to evaluate talent. Yeah, it's hard to argue with that. I'm going to say Carson Wentz just because he was the first year for Sashi Brown and his regime, and they could have started their regime with the quarterback and said, okay, we found our guy, now we're going to build the rest of the roster. Instead, they make the trade. They don't view him as a top 20 quarterback, which obviously is wrong. And I like his physical characteristics. He's 6'5", 240. He's bigger than Deshaun Watson, and he's played more than Watson or Garoppolo. You know, mm-hmm. I was in his second year. That's more, and I think we have more evidence that he's going to be a franchise quarterback. But they'll probably regret not having all three of them. Um, Jim, you wrote a column over the weekend, and then and then Hugh Jackson says after the game that the Browns have to be perfect to win. And to me, it's a shot at the front office saying the roster is just not good enough. Um, we played this blame game before, but when you look at the roster and why the Browns are 0 and 8, I mean, how much blame do you place on that front office for building the roster that they have? And then asking Hugh Jackson to try to win games with it. Well, I put a lot of a lot of the majority of the blame in the front office because I mean you're giving a coach the worst talent level probably in the whole league, and especially with a, a first year quarterback that you don't know a lot about. And um, I just think that you look hard for decisions that they made that really worked out, and and there almost aren't any. Yeah. I mean, they, 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 if they break even on a trade, it's almost a reason to celebrate. So I, I think the the front office absolutely is most to blame here because it's just there there hasn't been a lot to hang their head on. And I agree with what you said about Wentz. That would have been a, a perfect pick for them to make right out of the shoot, yeah. especially for Sashi to show people, you know, we got some pizzazz here and we're going to go after this thing. And instead they tried to get cute right out of the box and it didn't work. Yeah, I, I'm with you. You know, I mean, Hugh Jackson has his faults. There's no doubt about it. And he had another questionable time management at the end of the first half. Against Minnesota that I think cost the Browns three points because the Vikings went down and scored at the end of the first half, like every other team seems to do at the end of the first half. But I think Hugh Jackson goes into every game thinking, you know what, I don't have enough talent to win. So therefore, it affects every decision he makes. He feels rushed. It hurts his judgment. And that's not an excuse. I just think it's a tough position to be in as a coach. Well, Jim, normally we'd be predicting who's going to win the game Sunday, but there is no game Sunday. The Browns are on their bye. So I'm just going to ask you, instead of watching a Browns game, what are you going to do? Rake some leaves, play some golf? What are you going to do? <laughs> uh, or I could watch a real NFL game. That's a good uh, option. I, I could do that. Yeah, this is, talk about a team that the bye is coming in a really good time. Right. I mean, everybody needs to catch their breath, and you know, we'll see if anything happens major with trades or any uh, per, uh, personnel or front office decisions. Sure. But, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's almost like a, a relief to, you know, watching those games get to be so – you know, you keep waiting for the good stuff to happen, and right. we're still waiting. Yeah, well, I'm hoping for good weather and a little golf. Um, <laughs> thanks for watching. We'll be back next week at Stewart's TV and Appliance, and we're at the Zero Sub Zero Wolf Kitchen.